Dillo, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are live. By the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right behind me, little warning screen just in case. Uh, don't forget, man, we do got Patreon where we post five to ten times per week. We, uh, you know, we be watching Premier League highlights. That's my favorite thing to watch nowadays, man. Good little sport. <laughs> Link to that's down in the description, man. We also got Twitch.com, man. Usernames at the bottom of the screen. Uh, this is Joe Fish. Now, I've been watching a lot of Joe Fish lately, man. I've been watching a lot of Joe Fish lately. I just like how he does this. So, you know. I investigated the cave dwellers living deep beneath a major city. A major UK city. Gotta watch it. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, man, if you ever... if Joe Fish, if you ever watch my channel and you see your stuff on there, just... just Leave a comment if you don't want it on there, and I'll take it down. But nevertheless, man, I salute the work, man. Talk to me. He... Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. Hit that like button before I even watch. Already subbed. <laughs> Today I'm in Bristol in the southwest of England, the most expensive city to live outside. See, this is what I like about it. Look at the edits. Good little edits, man. Side of London here in the UK. A city that is suffering an overwhelming housing crisis. So much so, there's rumours that people have resorted to living in caves. Let's explore these rumours and find out if they are in fact true. Since 2010, the government announced more than £30 billion in cuts nationally to welfare payments, housing and social services, according to a study by the United Nations. These cuts have had a knock-on effect, with Bristol feeling the full force of these cuts, from soaring poverty and homelessness to a lack of housing. In July 2024, a damning report into the state of Bristol's council houses found serious failings in the way Bristol City Council has acted as the landlord to around 27,000 homes. With a backlog of over 16,000 repairs overdue, Almost 2,000 homes with serious damp and mould problems and 3,000 fire safety improvements that are yet to be completed. The government's regulator of social housing has issued an improvement notice and will now be working with the council to sort out the mess. A mess which council chiefs and politicians in the city recognise has been years, perhaps decades in the making. Camp. This is crazy. Is that a sink? see all the shoppers. Enjoy. Big dog, was that a sink? This look like, this is kind of nice. This is like a little grotto, I don't know. I feel like this is where they shot a scene from, uh, uh, King. this is where they shot a dang, I can't forget, I don't I forgot that, Game of Thrones, this look like where Jon Snow lost his virginity, tough. I can see all the shoppers enjoying the retail area of Bristol. I've just parked my car in one of the main car parks in the centre of Bristol and I'm now heading to the outskirts where the supposed location is of the cave dwellers to see how many tents are slap bang in the centre of Bristol city you can see a tent there there's a pink and a red one over there and there's a gentleman completely passed out on the ground over here next to a sleeping bag and things no bro is sleep on the coke on the soda, two liter, two liter as a pillow. Out on the ground, over here. Next. I'm not gonna lie, that is innovative. I'm not gonna lie, but dang. Just a sleeping bag and things. Unfortunately, it's becoming more of a common sight across the country, but it still doesn't change how shocking it is to see. There's another this little is, tent thing there. Another little encampment out the back here. Bits and bobs around. Strown out. Like there's tons of tents in Chicago, but it's it's. I I, I thought I'd never see it in the UK. I should have known. That was naive of me. All over the floor. What is happening to this city? 
Look at the state of this area. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not putting my tent over here. If I had to be in a tent, it's going back in the park. Under some nature, you feel me? I don't even like nature, but I don't I don't wanna be over here. Huge like encampment there. Big tent. Seems to be a wooden shack of some kind over there. And just loads and loads of rubbish. Building built something? Sleeping bags, bicycles, all just strewn about the place. Remember, this is the second most expensive city to live in outside of London. That's where it be though. What is this, a bike pile? And we are right in the centre of the city. In one of the recreational parks. You can see there's nah, a... Nah, this is mad. This is crazy. Bro, I'm getting it done. Homemade shack of some kind. Just tons and tons of rubbish everywhere. I can't believe this. Nah, yeah, nah, this is... Like, we've seen some stuff, but like, nah, Joe is really getting it done. Like, this is, and this is, for some reason, it just feels shocking her. Campfire there. It looks like a shanty town. I'm not gonna lie, this looks like a Walking Dead camp. You know, one of them camps they stop at and. It's another tent just laid out. I've got to be honest guys, it is a bit shocking to see so many tents set up in the middle of the city centre. I'm just heading towards an area in Bristol. now. This and I don't mean no offence, so please don't take it as offence, but as a reaction channel, I have to call it like how I literally am picturing it in my brain. And that's just how I pictured it. This is a bit of a hub for a lot of the problems and issues that are ongoing here in Bristol. There seems to be a number of homeless encampments that have been set up in the centre of the park. But also there's been a number of reports of violent activity. <coughs> just two days ago a man was stabbed repeatedly in the legs. And I can see already there's a number of encampments that have been set up in the park. You can see a big homeless encampment over there. Being rather loud and shouting so I'm going to keep my distance on that one. Okay. You can see there's more tents. One there, nice one hiding up behind the trees just over there. I see one over there. There's one over there. Why are all these tents the same? Are these migrants or are these like just regular homeless people? Because all the tents are the same, are like they like they were handed out or something. And there's a few over here. You see right here that that one. These are different. Though. Remember guys to like, comment and subscribe. When I film content like this, I want it to go out to as wide an audience as possible. And with your help, we can do that. I've got to- Nah, for real, please. Say, having grown up- My fact. I'm finna great. POV. <laughs> w editing too. I ain't gonna hold you. Dang, I'm lost. What am I doing? Oh, I just needed to scroll up. Here we go. Just down the road from Bristol, things have got so much worse over the last five to ten years. The amount of homelessness and poverty on the streets of Bristol now is overwhelming. It's shocking. And what we've seen today isn't even the tip of the iceberg. There's over 20,000 households that are currently on the housing waiting list within Bristol. The numbers are absolutely shocking. There's 21,000 people on the current waiting list, but there's only 27,000 houses, and they're already occupied. Thank you to the paid partner of today's video, BetterHelp. Life often throws you a cut. Hey, salute. Okay, you doing paid partnerships? That's when you really get into the bag. You know what I'm saying? I salute you for that, and I can't wait for the day that I get something like this, or, or you know what I'm saying? But... Earth ball. You can see how many caravans are here Good, overlooking Gavin. one of the recreational grounds in Bristol. Just for the travellers though, right? Huge yeah. numbers. Oh, recreational As you guys know, I have covered Caravan City in two previous videos on my channel. Bristol is known for having more people living in cars and caravans than anywhere else in the country. But people are going one better now. 
Growing up on the outskirts of Bristol, there was always an urban legend and urban myths about people living in the caves underneath Bristol. So today, we're heading out to investigate this. You can see just how high up the cliff we are and somewhere through the woods are the cave dwellers. You can see how inaccessible this area is. Who knows if the rumours are actually correct, but there's only one way to find out. You can see just how difficult it is. I'm on the side of a cliff. Like, literally, like, this is what my hope is. Like, one day I could get, like, a big enough reaction video, like, channel, like, big enough number that I could, like, hit these people up and be like, yo, I'm in your area. Can I come with you to one of these? Like, I would love to do this. Like, I would have loved to went and did this. Like, would I have been, like, like, a, like I would no, I would have been all in. You know what I'm saying? But, like, eventually when I'm out there, like, I want to be able to hit these people up that I'll be reacting to and go with them. And just go with them. Not, not do a video or anything. Just go with them to be in one of their videos, and then I react to it. That, that, that'll be crazy. Nah, Joe, I'm instantly turning around. I don't like the setup. I don't like the entrance. It's an umbrella there for what? That's doing a lot. This is the stuff of horror movies. What is Here's the entrance to the cave. You can smell fire coming from inside. Ain't nobody with you? Washing up facilities. Yeah, little pots and pans. Pots and pans. There seems to be some sort of a bed up there. Whoa, 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 I, buddy cut scene Joe you cut scene what happened what happened <laughs> I can see someone hell no it's actually sleeping oh okay. back underneath the covers just there Everybody, let's just focus. Let's, let's, let's not be that guy. I think I'm like, that scared you too, Joe. I know you backed the one up out of there. It's got so bad in Bristol, people have literally reverted back to the Stone Age and are now inhabiting caves. You can see a shelter has been made over the top of where the fellow's sleeping. I'm literally in shock. I can't believe this. That things have got this bad for some people that are now having to live in caves. Up on the well, our ancestors and Neanderthals and you know the first people to ever side of a cliff. Honestly, I cannot believe that. Growing up on the outskirts of Bristol, there was all How stable is this. All these urban myths and urban legends of people that were living in the caves, but I just thought it was a myth. Honestly, I just thought it was a myth. To actually find these encampments is shocking. Truly shocking. Yes, yeah, so you were saying about the homeless situation in and around Bristol. Yeah, it's, it's basically, um, you know, it's not as people think, it's actually more a system. It's
He looked like an ex-army veteran, for sure. So, people have this idea that the system sorts it all out and all the rest of it, but the fact is you can't you can't get anything sorted at the minute, it's especially for, I'm fine, we're fine for British people. If you don't have an addiction or a health problem or you can't be classified as having a mental health issue, you just don't don't get anything on the system, it's that simple. Uh, so if you're, if you're not a drug addict or you're not suffering from mental health, you feel that there's basically a yeah, real lack of help. It's like a prerequisite to get your housing and you get held down until uh, such time as uh, you agree with that and that's you know and, and people think it's oh well that's the excuse for it. Yeah there, there's a lot of people who you know have these issues but there's loads of people out there that you know they're, they're just turning up saying well I just want more money and stuff to get on with my life and they're not being allowed. It's a bit sad but yeah the whole the whole not gonna lie I've never jumped there in a video who jumps at reactions but this that that no I admit I jumped I was a little tweaked out. I didn't know what was going on right System, now. I mean, there's a lot of charities out there. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got my Glock on me. I was a little bit apprehensive of it all, you know? They're, they're getting paid vast amounts of money. Yeah. And yet you look around, same people are on the streets. Yeah. So what's going on? Why is there no circulate, recirculation with people getting off the streets? You know, because you've got lots of charities using these people. Now, charities, a lot of them are good, especially the food charities and stuff like that, mm -hmm. that hand out. Um, clothes, showers, food. But when it comes to the charities getting people off the street, you know, it's almost like, you know, sorry, but the you have to be life. an addict or you have to have a disability or you have to have a mental health illness, which is pretty insulting. People still think you can get job seekers, but you can't always, you know, you can't necessarily, it's almost impossible to get job seekers for a lot of people out in the streets anyway. Yeah, well, you touched on the fact that without an address, you can't get a yeah. can't get a bank account, and then without the bank account, you can't then get the universal yeah. credit, the payment. You can't have everybody like in the world who becomes homeless suddenly registered with some church or you know yeah. their address or a charity. I mean, yeah, some people do that, but the fact is, you just shouldn't have to. We've got British society that sh says that it provides housing, provides a basic amount of money, and basically, unless you agree to be um, uh, to have some sort of addiction or something. You don't. And it, don't forget, it's also being finessed by people who don't need it, or people who exploit it. You know what I'm saying? Don't forget the finesse is out there, and there's people who want to do it the right way <coughs> instead of trying to get over and beat the system that are stuck living in caves. And that is, this is unfortunate. Get that? Yeah. So that's when you look at everybody around, it's just stagnant. The, yeah. the, the, big, the big charities that are supposed to be helping people off the street, they've sat with me and, uh, you know, and they've said, oh, well, have you got this? Have you got that? Of course I haven't got these documents. Or, of course I haven't got these things. Yeah. You know, I, I even went into HSBC. I said, right, you've got a homeless bank account. Can I get one? And they said, yeah, but you need an address. I was like, well, what, what are you on about? You know? <laughs> Wait, what? They in there messing with y'all. They got a homeless bank account, but you need an address. Hold on a minute. So a homeless what? bank account, yeah, you need an address. Yeah, you still have to have an address for a homeless bank account. It's oh, just my like, goodness. I said, you're joking. And they went, no, if you, we have to have register it to somebody. I said, well, well, you don't have a homeless bank account then. I said, it's stupid, you know. And um, so this is the thing. So, you know, the general population get uh, shown this um, amazing, all this amazing work that all these charities yeah. and everything are doing. But actually, the same people are still without anything years mm -hmm. and years later until they sort of um, say they've got this problem with themselves. Yeah. And that's a systematic thing. That's a, from community to community. That's a, all the way across the country. Yeah. That's how the communities work yeah. in Britain. Is Basically, you come into a community, you've got to be sort of almost degraded to nothing before the community accepts you back in, in or accepts you into their community. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens in the background. But yeah, what, what the public is being told is like, basically we've got systems in place for all this and yeah the system's there but it doesn't mean you can use it yeah you know it's uh, it's just being it's just being stopped until you comply to sort of degrade yourself even further it's absolutely <laughs> crazy isn't it and so how long have you been here for then um, well i've actually been i don't always stay here yeah but, um over many years uh, probably about oh, six or seven years really um originally there was uh, a polish guy who built a hut in it yeah um, <coughs> Uh, older guy uh, he used to live in a tent out of the back cave there's a cave out behind it and uh, I originally started living in a cave there's uh, there's another side cave is uh, that? yeah I had a double duvet in there did you? Yeah. Ooh, so how is it sleeping in the caves? Uh, you know as long as you've got experience 
Yeah, because yeah, you've touched on you've got a lot of experience with uh, outdoor pursuits and yeah. that type of thing. I, mean, well, I, used so. to, I used to teach and train people for oh, there you go, 15 then. years, so, um, and also I've got my own experience around the world. Um, but told the thing you. is, yeah, it's I told you, I knew he was an ex army dude. He took, he's in a cave, but he's still clean cut, <laughs> shaved, like he looked like he an army vet. It's all right for a while, uh, which you know. says a lot. Like, this is what an army vet who fought for the country is, is. This is what it is now. That's crazy. A lot of people come out and think it's like, well, yeah, yeah it's great, it's wonderful. It's yeah. Right, until suddenly, you know, it becomes winter and. Oh, of course. You know, no. Do you do you stay in through the winter as well? Yeah, yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, and how? Like I say, I'm not here all the time, mm -hmm. but um, I do pop back, stay for a bit, see some people I know, and and sort of generally take care of the place. Yeah. Make sure that, you know. Whoever turned out, I've already cleaned six bagfuls of uh, cans and bottles out of it. Oh, here. really? Yeah, there was uh, loads of old sleeping bags that were, you know you wouldn't ever want to sleep in again. So we got rid of all them and, and basically cleaned out all the crap. Yeah. And then uh, you know do that for a week or two or whatever, and, and then it just sorts it all out for another year. So as people come down here, it's not just a crap hole. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And like also, it's not dangerous. Bits of bits of sort of. Um, wall and door wall falling down you know yeah so they're just coming and uh taking care of it sort of make sure that it's pretty standards safe. On yeah because you can see it. it's actually really clean inside you can see that it's all swept through underneath there's no rubbish about the place or anything like that yeah it's uh, like uh, actually last night i sorted out the um you see it leading in you can see some dark uh, mud there just below yeah, the step just over there yeah, yeah. i leveled all that because it was you, you know people come in and they could trip over and stuff so and uh and cleaned it all out last night but i've also been cleaning out the water as well because some people obviously will turn up and use that um sometimes of course so is that is that clean water or <coughs> yeah, yeah near it's enough? Water. i mean um, there's nothing wrong with it i've I, i've um I've, I've used it um i use it as it's just um, there was a lot of mud in there, dead leaves. So uh, the other day I cleaned it out. That's probably the first time in about. Well, it's probably the first time it's ever been done, to be honest. Yeah, because it looks it looks like it's ran through the stonework as through the stone as well. Yeah, so. it does drip straight through. It, it actually drips through here. So it acted like a natural filter, that one, yeah. didn't it? Yeah. Oh wow. But the thing is, I've just put the chipping wire in round the front of here mm -hmm. to stop the leaves getting into the main pool. Ah, uh, getting blown through. Yeah, because this was about two inches thick of dead rotten leaves. Was it? Yeah, it was pretty it's, it's So you've done a really good job cleaning it all up and everything then as well. That's what the sink's for. It's, it's of course, can I have a quick look? look. Yeah, it's a foot pit. And bro, don't got a crib? Like, imagine how clean and well kept and how proud the council would be when they come on a visit to to inspect like well, and he don't got one and i've been seeing some people in them cribs tearing them up and he don't bro is keeping a cave you could drop something on the floor and eat it off the cave floor out here bro is out here really respectable <laughs> it's a it's a filter it's just a basic filter with um a couple of old uh woolly hats in there to to fill all the crap out and uh a pillow and stuff just to keeps it's actually got most of the stuff out of the water mm -hmm. so you can now see for the first time ever you can see to the bottom of the pool you yeah know. you can see Never been able to yeah you can see it's a little spatula down there actually there. to be fair yeah there's this it's just this image that people who i don't necessarily agree with the word homeless i think that's um like a system way of sort of attacking people but most people sort of tend to say nfa no, no fixed fix abode no fixed abode yeah, yeah. Never heard of that saying, NFA, okay, that's respectable. Because that covers everything, whether you're camping, whether you're sleeping in a squatted building, or you know, whatever, whether you're on a sofa at someone's house, it's just sort of um, become this, as soon as you say homeless, uh, for the actual system of society, you're deemed to be nothing, you're deemed to be worthless. You know? I often say within my videos, I often say that homelessness comes in many different forms, and often when you say the word homeless, people instantly think of rough sleepers yeah. on the street. And That's drunks and druggies. And drugs and druggies. And it's, not, it's not that. I mean, in, in Bristol, we've got a massive homeless community. Yeah. You say, we don't say NFA community because obviously... It sounds you know, a bit strange. A bit weird. But um, yeah, there is a huge homeless community, and a, a lot of people have known each other for a long, long time. I've known guys here for, well, not just guys, but people here for about nine years. And it's not just people on the street we know, we know people in charities, we know people in churches mm -hmm. and religions, and you know, wherever people are going, they, you get to know people just yeah. by doing it. I'm not gonna lie, this is probably one of the greatest interviews, like, because it's like captivating, like, it's. it's sometimes I'll be skimming through people, not when I'm doing reactions, but like, 
I like I watch some videos like off camera, and the interview would come up like like uh, like they're running into somebody. They'll be like, "Oh man, he waffling. He don't got no it's nothing to talk about." But this dude has a lot of great points. Uh, you know, if you're living in the house. It's good to listen to. And so is this uh, the shelter that you've built over there then? Do you get drips through or something no, like that? Right, uh, if you come at it, coming on near, um, I built this a long time ago, yeah. quite a few years ago, uh, basically uh, because um, originally my mate built this hut here, Yeah. Um, Mr. Magic, and I was originally just sleeping here in the middle of the cave. Yeah. And, and it was fine, but there was one day where it's only ever happened once mm -hmm. where the wind came straight down through the cave oh. and also came straight in through the mouth of the cave. I've never have it, had it happen before or after and it was Baltic, it was extremely cold. I can cold. imagine it was freezing, yeah. I, mean, I, could, I could put up with the cold but that just, you know, it was the only time it happened so I realised that basically um, there was a need for a proper shelter. Yeah. Because this hut is open at the end of that, the wind can go straight through. And also, this is this was somebody else's hut. They built it. Um, yes, when I mean. you when you're living outdoors, homeless or anything like that, there's there's a sort of bit of some people have a bit of a stigma about you know it's, it's sort of his hut and mm -hmm. you know where he's been sleeping. I don't really want to be sleeping on top of that again, but right, unless I have to. But short term, that's all right. But if you're staying you know long term, yeah. So I built this, and um, basically it's got a wood burner in there, a stone stone wood burner, and everything like that. Lie me. Um, so I'm able, I'm able to survive. I've been out here, in the, I've been out here before in the snow, um, and it's been lights. beautiful. Snow's been coming down, and you look out the cave. I mean, like a light from a phone. Like I'm trying to the, see. It's surreal. It's like I can yeah. imagine. Yeah, <laughs> I can imagine because where we're sat as well, it's 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 not the most. This is incredible. You know, I started off with a lot of fear and a lot of apprehension, but this is incredible. This dude right here is an incredible individual. I ain't gonna lie. This bro is out here building, maneuvering through life like this. He's successful. He should not be having to do all of this. I could, I, I don't feel that in my heart that he should be doing. No place that. in the world either, is it? So it's, no. it's, uh, it's nice and nicely out of the way. That's for yeah. sure. It's a bit, it's a bit of a trek in, especially at night. Uh, I, you know, I usually come back at night because uh, go out and see people, and uh, the pathway in is, is, it's not horrific, but you know, it's. To the average person, you're, you're going to have problems. Yeah, definitely. Uh, getting here, definitely. But I suppose that is a bonus for you, really, isn't it? I suppose being off the beaten track a little bit, you're not yeah, going to yeah, get bothered exactly. by you people. You don't want to be so far out that you, you're absolutely disjointed. Well, it doesn't bother me, to be honest, I, because of my, my past, my training. But um, you don't really, if you, you can get to a point of disjointing yourself so far from society that you sort of. You're... No, he said he made it clear it wasn't a choice or he. Something happened. You realise what well, I ain't gonna. I think he splits time somewhere else too. He said. A minute, you know I haven't spoken to someone for so long. It's just unreal. Goodness me, yeah. Um, so you don't sort of necessarily want that. It do kind of seem like a bit of a choice though, low key. But I think he's. I don't know. I think he's trying to get help. He he made, he made it clear that it was a lot of stuff going on. But at the same time, you you need to go far far enough away, or or have somewhere out of the way far enough that basically you got your own space, your own sort of um, you know if if even if this is a choice, this is still crazy. Say something was to go wrong in town, you could come back to somewhere. And right. you've got security. Yeah, that's yeah. it, isn't it? At the moment, I mean, it's not a problem if people turn up. People have turned up, like yourselves turn up. And it's like, um, it's not a problem or an issue. It's just like, you know, you need somewhere out of the way, your own safe space. I mean, some people know, there's quite a few people that know that I, I do stay here mm -hmm. when, I, when I'm back. Um, they tend to call me a caveman, so right. <laughs> it seems straightforward. <laughs> but, um, but again, that's, that's great in one way. In another way, I still don't know who could turn up. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I've, I've even got to have a backup plan to this. Yeah. So, you know, if, if I turned up here and there was a load of people here I didn't necessarily want here and they, they wouldn't shift, mm -hmm. am I going to just, you know, get into trouble with these people over, you know, them staying here for a while until they get pissed off and leave? Yeah. No, I'm just going to go, well, if you really like that, I'll just go into town and see some people or something. I'm just leaving to it. Eventually they'll move on. Yeah. Because, you know. Yeah, I expect it takes real commitment to be able to live here, really, yeah. and knowledge. Yeah, yeah, it's... um. There's a lot of history. People don't people don't realise. They just sort of um, think, "Oh, you're homeless. You know, you, you don't know anything. You're sort of there, and that's that. You know." And um, they treat you 
quite differently to everyday society. This is intriguing. Society. Um, you, you, have, you, have y'all paid attention to the vocab words I've been using today? Are you trying to let y'all know I'm a slight genius? You know? If I, you know, I tell a couple of people about what I've done in my past, you know, my work, mm -hmm. and my, my outdoor stuff. And they're like, wow, you know, and people have said, oh, write a book. And I've gone, well, I'm still living. Yeah, <laughs> I'm still living. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, people write books when they get bored and they want to settle down. Yeah, tight, you know, that's cool, like that. yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it is, you do get treated quite a bit differently. It's just a, it's, an, it's a natural thing. I don't think people want to do it. But it's society that has taught these people, no, 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 homeless people are criminals, homeless people are drug addicts, homeless people are alcoholics, and you know, it's this, this thing that's been taught, and it's actually not true. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, walk, you walk around, you see a homeless person having a beer, and you think, oh my God, look, homeless person, beer, awful, yet yeah, you're all right with your mates going into a pub and having 20 beers on a Friday night, coming out and fighting. There you go, mate. Yeah, you know, and it's just, you know, it's just stupid. So yeah, you, you do have people who are homeless, sort of. Uh, Twenty beers. This, this idea is is different. They don't realise that there actually is communities of people. Yeah. You know, and it's not all just we we actually know who the ones who are, who are taking all the drugs. Yeah. And drink. You know, we're going to speak to him not because we want to get into that or anything, because you know, uh, if if you do what society does, which is just basically treat these people like they're nothing. They, yeah, they only get worse. That's it, mate. You know, so you treat them as part of the community. If they get out of hand, you sort of straight with them, but not nasty. You know, um, and you just sort of you don't, you don't disrespect each other. You know, you get a few people who get pissed up and stuff like that, but you get that in normal society. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. And and yet we're people who are out on the streets or homeless or whatever you want to NFA. It's like, oh no, they're bad for it. No, you know, we actually have to survive on nothing most of the time. Yeah. You know, like I haven't had any money for nine, ten years, something like that. Yeah, I do. Off the government. Yeah, and people are like, oh, well, you know, they just get paid money. No, no, that's not the case. We actually go and see people we know. Um, just because I live like this, this is how I decide to live, mm -hmm. definitely, you know, in, in essence. And each person over there decides to live however they. So it is a choice from him, then. They want to. Yeah. And it's the same as anybody living in houses, really. Mm -hmm. the, you know, you decide okay. which house you want to live right. in. You decide where you want to live, who you want to surround yourself with, and how you want to interact with people. Same with people. It's an outdoorsman. People who are on the street, same with people who are homeless. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah, you get some wrong ones, you're always going to get some wrong ones, but that's the same in every part of life. Totally. It's just, you know, um, your society tells everybody, oh, no, these people are, are dangerous and, and wrong and... It's just not the case, mm. you know. That's what I found too, mate. Yeah, you know, you, you've got a lot of people that have got, look like they've got a lot of time, but actually you've got to be quite busy. Yeah. You know, it's a 24-hour thing, like... To be continued, I'm not going to lie, this is still like a... Very, well, guys, that was... This, this is crazy. This is very interesting. City of Bristol. What an eye-opening experience. That you about to be a part two? Absolutely. What's today? Let me know in the comments below what you thought, and I'll see you on the next one. Alright, TLL leave a like, comment, original videos in the description.